How many mm-hmm. families were there in Scarsett around the 1915 or so? Seven. Oh, probably in the winter time, there's probably 25, 30 families. There was a grocery store here that stayed open year round then. In fact, there was two. Go there and get stuff and charge stuff all went along and then work all next summer to pay up this winter's bills. Then in the fall, you'd start in charging again. You never got ahead. Was there any work in the winter? Well, some, not too much. There was, of course, some carpentering and painting and whatnot because you had no automobiles. You had horse and wagon at that time, carriage or whatever. He wasn't about to drive to town to work. So, but uh, you did what, uh, whatever you could find to do with the land. There was, of course, there was very little money around. If you were fortunate enough to get a job with a carpenter or repairing some of these houses for the summer people or building new ones or something like that, why, all well and good. But you could keep your, kind of keep your head above board. But otherwise than that, it was tough sledding. Oh, I'm going to tell you. Mm. I know, and I was one of nine children. They used to go off uh, Sconset in dories to fish and because uh, I can remember that with my grandfather and then when it was time for those great big dories you know to come in with their codfish he had a great big sled oh a long sled oh about that wide you know with runners and he um, would hitch the horse up to that and go down to the beach below bank and then he would help uh, haul the dories up. And then he would haul up the fish on his sled up to their shanties. And he was paid so many fish, so many big codfish. For doing the work. For doing that. And then he would take them home and clean them. He did that for, the, for his winter, help out with the winter food. He didn't go fishing himself. No, no, he was a farmer. He had a farm. He had a he had a huge vegetable garden, fresh vegetables, and he had about a thousand. He and his son about a thousand White Plymouth Rock chickens, mm. and uh, he catered to this summer actors' colony. There's, there were four of us boys and my sister. So there were five children in, in the family, and in those days it was pretty hard times. My father was a fisherman. So I fish for codfish and bluefish with, off, uh, off of Scotch in a dory, as we call it. So I, uh, many a time I've gone off with him at daylight to get fish. And we used to, used to uh, salt them down. They'd cut the heads off, see, and, and, and spread out the backbone and, and spread them out flat on their back like. And they, they, would, they would lay them all around a big barrel and put salt on them to make a pickle, you know, and let them stay there oh, for oh, several days. And finally, when they, when they thought they were pickled enough, we had to take them out and put them on drays, like long slats, so the sun would dry them. And we had to be very careful not to uh, put them out when the fog was uh, around, because it would uh, mold the fish, you know, see? Mm-hmm. So after we got them all treated and everything, why, we used to pile them around in a circle like up on our haymow and go up there at times and cut off a piece of the raw meat and eat it. It tasted very good. So I was practically born, brought up on fish, but that's why I don't care so much for, for fish today. And we had a horse and carriage, like there was about six gentlemen here that had a, had a horse, horse and carriage. They'd go down to the square near the post office and uh, they'd line up, see. Well, the first one, they had a, had a uh, job to take people to the golf down here, all with the moors, so I, He'd, he'd go on his uh, trip, but he, when he came back, he had to be the last one, see? So that's how they took their turns. I think they used to charge something like 50 cents to take the person down to the, the, the old golf course in Wisconsin. And he used to paint. In fact, they used to ground painting with him in the fall to paint in different houses like that, you know. Yeah. July 1st, 1926. Street lights of Wisconsin were first electrically lighted. But before that time, the uh, lamps were lit by they burnt kerosene, mm-hmm. 
And I used to go around with the lad. My father used to be one of the lamplighters here years ago. And uh, I used to go out with him, with his horse and team, and help him light lights, you know. Then at 12 o'clock, he'd go around again and put them all out. Then the next morning, of course, using kerosene with so much wind, you, 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 their glass would smoke up. I can see him now cleaning the, the big lamps with newspapers like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, things like that you never forget as a youngster, you know. Was that a town paid job? Did the yes. town hire him? Yeah. So uh, I don't know what his fee was, but <laughs> very small in those days, I guess. Yeah, sure. Well, did the people have farms? Well, I wouldn't say they had farms, but they had, a lot of them had gardens, or, you know, home gardens where they raised a lot of stuff. They raised a, oh, potatoes and turnips and cabbages and carrots, beets, and all that kind of stuff that they would put down in the winter time for the winter time. They always managed to get along, and I mean, if you had more potatoes than you needed, and I didn't have enough, and I had more turnips than I needed, and you didn't have enough, well, we just swap back and forth, that's all. There was a lot of that went on, trading stuff back and forth, you know. So they, they managed to get by pretty well. Didn't, I don't ever recall of anybody dying of starvation. It might not have been top-notch meals, but they stuck with you, whatever you had.